Hello and welcome to today's webinar on the hiring process and interview tips for techno-functional consulting jobs in business systems analysis, project management, or software quality assurance. Our trainers at Quebecal are industry professionals that have taken hundreds of real interviews and we want to use their knowledge to help you out. We have also compiled an interview question and answer bank gathered over many years of experience that you can buy on our website www.quebicalglobal.com. Let's understand the hiring process in companies in order to know how best you can position yourself for a job. It all starts with a technology hiring manager that has either an employee or consulting position to fill. For an employee position, he or she talks to the company's sourcing manager, who uses various avenues like referrals, career websites, internal applicants, or job fairs. For consulting positions, the hiring manager talks to the representatives, also known as client manager, of various tier one IT vendor companies. Client managers work with their recruiters to get the right candidates using the exact same avenues. If the tier one vendor is unable to find the right talent, they sometimes approach tier two staffing vendors who typically maintain an internal pool of consultants. This means that you as a candidate need to ensure that you are at the right place at the right time to find the right job. You need to be on career websites like Dice.com, Monster.com, Indeed.com, CareerBuilder.com, and have an attractive LinkedIn profile. You should make a list of companies that you are interested in and scout their career sections on the website. You should approach smaller staffing companies and ensure that you are on the internal pool that they are consistently sending to prime vendors. For all the options above, there is push and pull style of job hunting. Push is when you search and apply for specific positions. Pull is when you upload your resume on the websites and hope that the recruiters will find you when they look for candidates. This means that unless the job is for a very niche skill, each posting results in applications from hundreds of interested candidates. I've been conducting interviews for business analysts and project manager positions for several years now, and it's not uncommon for me as a hiring manager to get 100 plus resumes each time I post a vacancy. This is a sensory overload for the recruiter and hiring manager, to put it mildly. To ensure that you do not get filtered out, you need to make sure that your resume stands out. Check out the free material section at www.quebicalglobal.com where we also have good sample resumes. Your resume needs to appeal to the recruiter in order to be shortlisted. Recruiters might not have the complete knowledge about the job itself, and so your resume should be visually appealing, organized, and the key skills needed as per job requirement should be highlighted in the resume. Your contact information should be very easy to find at the top. Your skills summary should be at the very beginning so that the reader does not have to go through the entire resume to know what you have to offer. Your technical skills should be laid out in a table like this. And finally, your project's past job should be laid out chronologically, starting from the latest one with details of the business area, your day-to-day -day roles and responsibilities, and any accomplishments that differentiate you from the competition. Resumes for consulting positions do tend to be more descriptive than the ones for permanent positions. This is because in consulting positions, there are more layers of recruiters and you don't have to be filtered out. But the rule of thumb is to write enough to generate interest without going overboard. If your resume is shortlisted, then the first round is usually a telephonic conversation with the recruiter. The focus is on high level communication and how well you articulate your key skills. It's essential, however, to be in the good books of the recruiters, as they have the power to present you to the hiring manager. The next round is usually a 30-minute to one-hour conversation with a hiring manager and sometimes his or her colleagues. It's becoming more common now to use video conferencing software, as everyone likes to put a face to a name. Some commonly used avenues include HireView where you record answers to a set of canned questions and your video is played back to the hiring manager later. The conversation is not in real time. 
WebEx or telepresence. This is real-time video conferencing over private networks. Google or Skype. This is real-time video conferencing over public internet. The candidates that appear to be a good fit are typically called in for an in-person interview. The final round is the in-person interview, which may comprise of meeting several people over the course of a full day, or at least half a day. Be prepared to get repetitive questions, as not all companies are efficient, and different people may end up asking you the same type of questions. Each interviewer will always start with introductions to break the ice, and will ask you to give an overview of your professional trajectory. The next part will be about explaining your specific role and responsibilities in your latest projects. It's typically focused around the latest two to three projects. After this, the interviewer will get into solving specific scenario-based questions. There might be some whiteboarding involved, and they will ask your opinion on different approaches in project lifecycle. Finally, they will close by checking your ethics, your career aspirations, and your interest level in the job offer. The final question is typically, do you have any questions for me? This is your chance to really get to know the job profile and the expectations. Do ask intelligent questions here as it shows your interest level, and you need to know what you're getting into. All in all, the interviewers typically look for your soft skills like communication, professional maturity, poise and confidence in your own ability to fulfill the job requirements, your ability to think on your feet and solve business problems, not just academic or certification knowledge, but application of that knowledge to real-world problems. Last but not least, your professional credibility, your job changes, and reasons for looking for a change now. Interviews are meant to check whether you fit well in the team and can do the job. It's not like a university examination where you could be asked anything from a 300-page textbook. So prepare efficiently. Don't try to cram everything for the last minute. Understand the job requirements carefully and prepare for the main skills required as per the job requirements. To sum it up, you need to build a case that you are the best fit for the job. Link key points in your resume to the job being offered. Avoid negativity of any kind, like talking bad about your past employer, manager, or yourself. Breathe life into the interview by using examples from your experience and prove that you have the right attitude and team spirit. Drive the interview to your strong points. Avoid talking about areas that you are weak in. Good luck, and now go get the job you so deserve. Thank you for listening to this webinar. I hope you found it useful. Please feel free to leave comments on this video. Do call us at 201-340-4718 or check us out at www.cuevacoglobal.com. We offer a variety of information technology courses and interview preparation packages. Feel free to email us to schedule a live demo webinar. Thank you once again 